I built an entire game without writing a single line of code. Only me and AI. Step by step, I will show you how to build a game from scratch using only one AI tool. Building a game doesn't have to be complex anymore, even for beginners. Now, here's the game plan. We're building a game and the best part is GitHub Copilot AI will code everything for we us. We can put a simple prompt like create an AI enemy that will attack the player. Seconds later, the AI created the code for us. And even better is that we don't have to know anything about code because the AI will make sure the code will be put in the right map to make sure the game actually will work smoothly. Now, before we jump into gameplay mechanics, we need to set up our foundation, Unity. This is where it all begins. If you've never opened Unity before, don't worry. I'll walk you through the whole thing. First, go ahead and launch Unity. Once you're in, click on new project. You'll see different options here, but for this project, we're going with three decor. Now give your project a name, something simple and easy to remember, and then proceed. And that's it. One important thing to note, make sure you're using the three decor render pipeline. Why? Because this is the native pipeline used by the free assets we'll be using. If you switch to a different pipeline, you'll run into issues and trust me, fixing that manually can be a headache. Keeping it on 3D core will save us time and effort later. Now that we're inside Unity, let's get familiar with the core windows. These are the tools every game developer will use 100% of the time. So understanding them now will make your life much easier. The hierarchy window is where you see all the game objects in your scene. If it exists in the game, it'll be listed here. Think of it as a directory of everything currently in play. The project window acts like your game's file explorer. It holds all your assets, scripts, and everything else you need for development. The scene window is your main sandbox, where you actually build the game world. You can move things around, edit objects, and design your level. The game window is where you see what the player sees. It shows exactly what the in-game camera sees, giving you the player's perspective. The inspector window is your control panel for tweaking objects. Whenever you select something in Unity, the inspector lets you adjust its properties like size, position, color, and more. These five windows are the foundation of Unity. Once you start working with them, they'll become second nature. Instead of spending hours building every tiny detail, from scratch. We're going to use the Unity Asset Store to grab some high quality free assets that will instantly make our game look and feel amazing. Think of it like picking out the best ingredients for a recipe. Except here, we're choosing spaceships, effects, and environments that will bring our game to life. To get started, Click on window at the top of Unity and select Asset Store. This will open up a huge collection of assets that game developers around the world use. In the search bar, type the names of the assets we need. Free quick effects, all sky free, simple space starter kit and alien ships pack. These assets will give us the special effects, background, spaceships and enemies we need to build an exciting space shooter game. Once you find each asset, click get assets and Unity will download them directly into your project. The best part? These assets are completely free and we won't have to spend any time modeling spaceships or designing a skybox from scratch. This means we can focus on the fun parts like coding enemy AI and making the gameplay as engaging as possible. Now that we have our assets downloaded, it's time to bring them into our Unity project and keep everything organized. Just like keeping a clean workspace helps you focus, organizing your game file will make development much smoother. The first thing we need to do is create a dedicated folder for our imported asset. Head over to the project window, right click, select create folder and name it external assets. This will keep all of our download assets in one place, making it easier to find and manage them. Next, we need to import the assets we grab from the asset store. Open window, go to my assets, and you'll see all the assets you've downloaded. Start adding them one by one to your project, making sure to only select the parts we actually need. It's tempting to import everything, but adding unnecessary files can slow down Unity and clutter our project. For example, when importing the Skypack asset, we only only need the space skybox. Deselect everything else to keep our project lightweight and efficient. Think of this step as picking only the ingredients you need for a recipe. Through keeping our asset list clean, we make sure our game runs smoothly without unnecessary files slowing us down. Now that we have our assets, it's time to transform our blank Unity scene into a game world. Now, 
Let's start placing our assets into the scene. Open Gabriel Angular Productions, locate the Unity PKG file, and import everything except the scenes folder. We won't need those extra files, so skipping them helps keep our project lightweight. Next, drag the skybox into the scene to instantly transform our empty space into a deep immersive outer space environment. Adjust the camera angle to your liking to ensure the perfect view. Now. Let's add our main game elements. Drag a player model from the space starter kit into the scene and position it where you want the action to start. Then do the same for an enemy model, placing it a short distance away to set up a dynamic playing field. To complete our game's basic mechanics, open the effects folder, go to prefabs and choose a projectile that suits your vision drag it into the scene as well. Our game operates on a fixed plane, similar to the classic Space Invaders. The x-axis is where movement will happen, while the y-axis remains fixed to ensure stable object collisions. The z-axis should remain unchanged to maintain proper depth for the gameplay. Carefully position the camera, player, enemy and projectile within the scene, taking note of their exact coordinates so we can fine tune interactions later. Add proper tags to each game object. Select each one, go to the inspector window, click on add tag and assign them the appropriate labels, player, enemy and projectile. This will help Unity identify different objects during gameplay. Lastly, rename the game object accordingly. With our environment set up, we now have a game world that is visually engaging, well organized and ready for action. Now, let's start building the heart of our game, the player character. Think of this step as giving our game its main character, the one the player will control. First, select the player model and make sure it's centered in the camera's view. Now, we need to set up the physics and interactions. Open the inspector panel and remove any unnecessary components that may have come with the model. Then click on add component and search for rigid body. This component allows our player to interact with the game's physics system. But since we don't want it falling due to gravity, make sure to uncheck the gravity option. Next click add component again and add a box collider. This will define the physical boundaries of our player. Check the S trigger box. This means Unity will recognize collisions without physically stopping movement. To set up shooting mechanics, we need a reference point where bullets will spawn. Right click the player object in the hierarchy window and select create empty. This creates an invisible helper object. Rename it to firing point and position it slightly in front of the player model where the projectile should appear when fired. Now let's add some code to make our player move and shoot. Click add component, type in player script and hit enter. This will create a new script and attach it to the player. Open the script in Visual Studio. Here's where GitHub Copilot becomes our best friend. If you haven't already, log into Copilot. Now use this prompt. Make me a player script that can only move on the x-axis that's restricted to where the camera can see it. The player should not be able to move when it reaches near the camera's ending boundaries. Give this boundary offset a value of a float. Whenever moving, give the player a panking animation by slightly rotating its z-rotation according to the direction the player is moving. Give the player the ability to shoot projectiles on a fixed firing point whose transform can be referenced. When shooting projectiles, apply force and that is it has a velocity only the z-axis. Ensure there are references to these factors and make the variable types for the projectile as a float. Once Copilot generates the script, simply save it and go back to Unity. The last step is to link the firing point to the script in the inspector so Unity knows exactly where to spawn the bullets. And just like that, we now have a functional player that can move and shoot. Now that our player can move and shoot, we need to make sure they have something to fire. Let's create a bullet that we'll use and disappears on impact. Think of this as crafting the ammunition for our game. It's a small but crucial part of making the gameplay feel responsive and exciting. Select the projectile you chose from the asset pack. This will act as our bullet. Then let's add a script to make the bullet function. Click add component, type projectile to create the script and open it in Visual Studio. This is where we'll let GitHub Copilot take care of the heavy lift. If you haven't already, log into Copilot and enter this prompt. Create a script for a projectile that gets destroyed if it hits any object and gets destroyed after reaching a certain distance from its spawn origin. Give this distance a float of 50 that's adjustable in the inspector. Once Copilot generates the script, save it and return to Unity. The final step is to link the bullet prefab to the player script so that when the player shoots, Unity knows exactly which object to spawn. And just like that, our player now has working bullets, making the game feel more dynamic and action-packed. 
Now for one of the most exciting parts, bringing our enemies to life. A great enemy AI makes the game more engaging by keeping players on their toes. We want our enemies to be unpredictable, sometimes aggressive and always a challenge to face. To start, select the enemy model in the hierarchy and remove any unnecessary components from the inspector to keep things clean and efficient. Next, we need to set up its physics. Click Add component, select rigid body and make sure to uncheck gravity since we don't want our enemy to fall. Then add a collider to define the enemy's hitbox and check its trigger to allow proper collision then detection. With the physical setup done, it's time to give our enemy some intelligence. Open Visual Studio and let's get Copilot to help us generate an AI script. If you haven't already, log into Copilot and enter this prompt. Create the script for an enemy AI that does a random movement pathing on the x-axis that is restricted within the camera's POV. Have the AI try and follow the player's movement while also randomly moving. When following the player, give it some unpredictability. Let it have shorter speeds and make the fire rate random. Let it have a short random delay before it tries to follow the player. Alternatively, have it sometimes not follow the player but passes in place for a bit before following. Don't let it fire with a fixed fire rate. Make firing it random. Have this enemy shoot projectiles at the player and if they get hit by a projectile, have it destroyed. Have references available for the player, the projectile object. Make sure that the enemy doesn't collide with other enemies or prefab instances of itself and have a small fixed distance between it. Ensure that the enemy is facing the player. Once Copilot generates the script, save it and return to Unity. Attach the newly created script to the enemy object. With this AI in place, the enemies will have unpredictable movement, adding excitement and variety to the gameplay. Now, when you play, you'll notice that enemies sometimes chase you, sometimes pause and shoot at different times, making them feel alive and challenging. Now that our enemies are set up, we need a way to keep the action going by constantly spawning new enemies. Without a spawner, the game would quickly become empty once all the enemies are defeated. So let's create an automated system that will handle enemy spawning dynamically. To start, go to the hierarchy window, right click and select create empty. Name this object enemy controller. This will act as our manager for all enemy spawns. Next, open the inspector panel, click add component and select enemy controller script. This script will handle when and where enemies appear in the game. Now, let's use Copilot to generate our script. Open Visual Studio and enter this prompt. Create a script for an enemy controller. This controller manages the instantiated enemies on the scene and continuously spawns the enemies. Ensure that the enemies are spawned only within the bounds of the camera and it is spawned only at the 8th position on the ZX. Have references ready for the enemy to be spawned. Once Copilot generates the script, save it and return to Unity. Attach the script to the enemy controller object. And just like that, we have a fully functional enemy spawner. Now, when you play the game, new enemies will appear at controlled intervals, making the gameplay feel dynamic and fast-paced. With this system in place, the battlefield will never be empty, ensuring that players always have an engaging challenge ahead. And just like that, we've built a full-on 3D game in Unity without writing a single line of code.